And if you want to really learn how to use that, then I would suggest um, doing one of their trainings. So they've got a, a series of different trainings. Here's what their plan is, looks like. It's great. It's 40, 50 bucks plus the, the case for it is about another 70 or 80. I would highly recommend the seven habits of highly effective people training. So this course is about two grand. Um, I've taken it. The, it really teaches you to go through and how to structure your day, to get yourself into that habit of saying what's an A priority, what's a B priority, what's a C priority, and be able to recognize those feedback. Um, fair warning to everybody here. As a tool, this course um, is ruinous to your self-esteem. <laughs> so part of this course is they will give you a blank 365-degree feedback from everybody in your organization. So any direct reports, if you have them, your peers, your bosses, cross-functional people that you work with, and uh, they encourage people to be brutal. And it is a really, really humbling experience. So just be prepared for that if you take that course and you take advantage of that tool. I'm trying to tell you, by the way, another really good training program they have is helping clients succeed. Uh, that's, as, as far as I know, it's available only corporately, but one of the key things I took away from the Helping Clients Succeed training was this. Is that as salespeople, we spend our time asking questions. That is our tools and trade. Carpenter has a, has a hammer and nails. We have questions. Those are our tools. And they taught me to ask a different question. I had spent a lot of time talking about what the customer's problem was. Well, what is the problem? What is the issue? And in reality, that's actually not as effective. The problem itself is kind of whatever. What's actually really important is what's the impact of that problem. So the questions I ask now is saying, well, so what's the impact of that financially? What's the impact of that on the rest of the team? What would happen if this continued and nothing changes? And if everybody looks at me and shrugs and says, well, oh well, uh, probably nothing, then I know that's not a real opportunity. If everybody looks around the table in panic and says, oh my God, I'd probably lose my job, then that's an opportunity I want to sink some time into. Does that make sense? Some of the takeaways um, are around that. So tool number one, Frank and Covey training. Cost-wise, about 200 bucks for the planner. You're looking at about two grand for the courses, but very important. And in the meantime, um, feel free to take this urgency importance thread. I, you can Google it anywhere. That's exactly where I got this one. Uh, they, they originally attributed to Eisenhower. It's actually been around long before Dwight Eisenhower. But those are some important tools around the training. With that, I'm going to move on to something completely different in terms of tools. Is there any questions around those specifically? Rupalin, just feel free to jump in and read them out. Sure thing. You can give it a second. No problem. While we're waiting for that, I'll bring up an, uh, another topic. Um, one of the things that is a reality in life, particularly for sales, here's my opinion, is that actually appearances do matter. Um, there is statistical research that shows, that shows up and says if you are a show up wearing a blue shirt, you are more trustworthy. Um, appearances, in fact, do matter. So the question is, how do you dress well as a rep and to make sure that you are showing up looking as best you can without spending a fortune, especially if you're starting out. Um, tool number two, I'd recommend Indochino. I really wish I got a cut from any of these guys. I don't. <laughs> these are just things that I use and my guys use, in fact, as well. So Indochino here uh, allows custom-made shirts and suits um, at a fairly reasonable price. So. It, Indochino has a very um, has a, a few showrooms in Toronto. They have it made overseas, and they ship it over. And you can go in and you can have them measure you. Um, the measurements are much better than they used to be. For those are, that are using this and have used this for a while, there's a couple of cautionary notes. Um, one is that they're, it's gotten more expensive than it used to be. And in my opinion, for the shirts specifically, the quality has gone down. The shirts are not as good as they used to be. The suits are fine. Um, to get the best deals, here's my recommendation. Join the Facebook group. They do tend to post their best deals on their Facebook group. Here's what it looks like here. And wait for a sale. 
there's a lot of different sales come out. We can get two suits for 800 bucks um, or shirts. There's, there's a bunch of different deals on there, but their, their Facebook page is by far their best one. Um, one thing to watch as well as a cautionary note for this particular tool is that they're often quote their deals in U.S. dollars. So be very careful about the currency around that because a lot of the time you'll say, wow, that's a great deal. Let's go for it. And in fact, it, it's actually not. So Indochino is a great way to be able to get custom-made clothing that looks great at a fairly reasonable price. Now, question I, uh, I hear all the time say, okay, well, the shirts aren't that good. So where are some decent shirts, particularly in the GTA? Um, my recommendation for shirts, for custom-made shirts, is just white shirts. Now they make other shirts other than just white, despite their name, so they have a bit of a branding problem, but they do make very high quality shirts for about $50 each. So here's the caveat to that. The caveat to that is that you gotta buy six of them at once. So you gotta spend 300 bucks for them. So call it 330 and change, call it 350. By the time taxes are taken into account, that'll get you six shirts. For 50 bucks a shirt, that's roughly what you're going to pay for something off the rack anyway. Uh, sometimes you can get a little cheaper at winners or whatnot, but if you want to look good at work and have a custom-made shirt, which really makes a difference, by the way, just white shirts, in my opinion, is the best one out there, particularly in the GTA. Uh, questions around tools for dressing yourself well without too much expense attached to that. Brooklyn, just fire them in as, as we go forward. Yeah, done. Uh, tool number three, so uh, while we're waiting for questions on this, I want to tuck into another thing that I use a lot. So here's one of my least favorite activities as a rep, actually entering my Salesforce notes. I do a meeting and I have to type up the notes and I have to try and capture everything that's happened in that meeting, which sometimes can be a lot, especially if there's more people in the meeting. I had a meeting a week ago when I, there was a dozen people in the meeting. So trying to capture everything that they had said and gone through was a lot for me to be able to do. I couldn't actually uh, make that happen. Well, actually, this is a good question. What about attire options for women? So there are a bunch in the, uh, in, in the GPA. I haven't found one. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be for me anyway, but uh, I haven't found one um, that was a good price to quality relationship. There are good ones and there are cost effective ones. I haven't found one for women yet that is good and cost effective. Please, if you, if you do find one, send me a message. This is definitely actively something that I'm looking for as well because it's not the first time I've received that question. Yes, uh, I see a comment here. There's been a trend toward the reps dressing down. I don't agree with this. I was always taught to dress as well or better than my clients. Yes. So let's talk about dressing because this is, this is something that um, quite often comes up in training courses that we do. And they say, well, how do I dress? I feel more comfortable in a suit my, uh, or I feel more comfortable in jeans. What should we do? Well, here, here's the bottom line. From a scientific point of view, people are more likely to buy from you if they like you and they think they are like you. So if you're similar, if they think, hey, that person's like me and I like that person, the bottom line is they're willing to do more for you. They're more willing to sink time and effort into piloting your deals. Because you think about it, who actually sells your deals? Do you think you sell your deals? Actually, that's a good thing. Add it in the chat function. Who here thinks they sell their deals if you're a B2B rep? Let's see. Let's try this. Okay. Okay. Not getting any comments. Apparently, this is unbelievable content. I'm answering every question as it comes out. It's just, it's incredible. Everybody will destroy their quota next year. Wonderful. So here's my thought on this. I don't think we're the ones who actually sell our deals in a B2B deal. I had a call this morning with one of my clients, it's about my biggest deal. She is the one selling it for me internally because she has more clout. People listen to her. You know why? Because she's skeptical. 
she sits back and she asks us all the tough questions ahead of time. And because she's been doing this for a long time, people know that when she brings a recommendation saying we should spend um, 700 grand on this deal, that means she means it. And people listen to her far more than I will ever, more credibility than I will ever have with that client. Why? Because they like her and they are like her. They work for the same organization. So in my opinion, um, it's building that relationship with the people that you need to go and sell for you within the organization. The way you dress is part of that. Do they see themselves as similar to you? So do you wear jeans? Depends on where they're at. If they're wearing jeans, sure, wear jeans. Um, if they're in suits and ties, then you be in suits and ties because you want to appear as similar to them. And, yeah, I think the rule of thumb to the comment here, um, I think the rule of thumb is find out how they dress and dress one step up. I think that's fair. If you're going to show up in jeans and a T-shirt, show up in jeans and a blazer. Um, what's the dress down for their office setting? Depends. So, okay, next up. Uh, let's take a look at typing things into Salesforce, which is one of my all-time least favorite activities, especially as a, as a rep. One of the things that I found um, be around this is that I have a lot of time in travel. So how do I make sure that all those notes are recorded when it's fresh, when it's available, and where I don't have to spend hours typing things in? So here's a fun fact. Um, uh, an average typer will type around 40 words a minute. And yet, how fast do we speak? Conversationally, uh, in North America, we speak at somewhere between 110 to 140 words a minute. So roughly three times as fast. So wouldn't it be great if you could record all of your notes verbally and automatically have that speech to text so that you can upload that into Salesforce or whatever CRM that you use afterwards? Well, it turns out you can. It's called Dragon Speaking. It's by a company by Nuance Communications. This is what their website looks like here. Really interesting stuff. So they've got a bunch of different plans and topics. Their, their main product is something called Dragon Speaking. It's built for the desktop. And it does require a little bit of training, not too much. You've got to talk for a little while. Um, but what you can do is once you've trained it, I will use it to say, here's what happened in my meeting. And here's how I structure my sales uh, meeting notes. So I, I'm not just sticking anything into the CRM. I am specifically structuring it in three categories. Number one, the first line is what are the next steps? What do I need to do? What are they going to do? That's important because they've got to meet you halfway. And by when? That's number one. Always start with that. Number two, at least this is how I structure it. Number two is what opportunities are we pursuing? So as a result of that conversation, what's the deal that we're pursuing? And then number three, then I'll start listing out other information in various categories to help me understand their business. Now, I'm a curious sort. Um, I think good salespeople always are. Curiosity is an absolutely key thing. So I'm curious about how the business works, how many people work in that unit, what their pain points are, what's going on, what's frustrating them. All of that information can be captured, and you can do it via voice three times as faster as you can type it. This is buying your time back. So there's a few caveats with Nuance and, and Dragon that I, would, uh, that I would note. One, uh, it's not perfect. There's gonna, they're going to insert errors in there sometimes. Um, two, you need to speak slower than you normally do. Me, I tend to get about excited about things. I tend to talk fast. It doesn't work as well with software. You have to speak at a reasonable pace. So a couple of caveats. It's not perfect. So how much does it cost? You know, it depends on the item that you buy. They've got a few different options. I'm going to review them here and give you my thoughts on each. Number one is their traditional dragon speaking product. It's a desktop product. You can load it up on your laptop. It's about 200 bucks. That's the one I've used. It seems to work fine. I have no issues with it. Um, particularly if I'm going to have a big meeting with a lot of notes, that's the one I want to use. The ideal for me would be able to do this while I'm on the road. Um, however, and they do have products for that, but there's a couple of caveats to those. Product number one, they have a Salesforce integration that's free. 
the Salesforce integration for Nuance is only available for iPhone users. So if you're an iPhone user, thumbs up, you're golden. If you're not, like me, I'm an Android user, um, there's nothing available. So, and also, as a note, the reviews on those, uh, the iPhone app, are not good. So I'm not sure how well that one actually works. They do have a new product. This is their new one here. It's called Drag It Anywhere for Android. And look, it's 150 bucks a year. Fantastic. You can download it. You can do all sorts of things. You can send emails. They allow you to integrate with all sorts of different things. Uh, personally, I'd recommend using it to send yourself an email with a note so you can just copy and paste it into Salesforce later. Here's the challenge, though, is that this uh, Dragon Anywhere, as far as, as of this morning, says it's available on uh, US and Canada. Not correct. It's not available as of this morning for me on Android. It might be available uh, for some other folks, but definitely not here. Uh, a couple of questions have come in. How do you find clients react to recording conversation? I don't. I'm recording my notes after the conversation. They will react extraordinarily badly if you record their conversation. This is me uh, at recording my notes. I'm usually taking notes during the, during the, the talk anyway, but afterwards. A couple of the questions that are coming in here. Interesting. Oh, interesting. Good, good feedback here. Um, Dragon only tends to work when I affect a North American accent. Measured cadence with equal emphasis on every syllable. Text-to-speech facility in my iPhone works better. It can do for sure. Use it and then cut and paste to wherever you want the text to land. All right, iPhone users, there you go. Do not use the uh, the badly reviewed Nuance software for Salesforce integration. You can use your iPhone to text and then cut and paste. Uh, which is a good question. We'll talk about where do you store that as well, and how do you retrieve information. So here's a way to buy back your time for roughly 200 bucks that you can, all of a sudden, you can enter your notes three times as fast as you could before. Well worth it. Um, I definitely use it, and it's a, it's a great tool. I had, any questions on that before we move on? Any other yes or no type stuff? Okay. Okay, coming up next, let's take a look at another tool on a, on a different note that's used to figure out how to store things. So I want to talk about Evernote. Evernote is tool number four that we're going to be talking about today. And it addresses a key problem. How do you store tons of information and actually find it effectively, particularly as an individual rep? Because let me, uh, let me throw this out there. Your company internet, at least if it looks like mine, I can't find anything I need. It's almost impossible. Most of what I need has been pieced together and shared on, on my own personal drives. So how do you make sure that you've got access to that anywhere? Well, you can use a tool like Evernote. Evernote, you can download on your phone, and you can attach tags to information, and you can do a full text search through anything in there. So you can say um, insurance presentation, and it will go through PowerPoint, it'll go through the text in a Word document, and it will bring up all of those things so that you can search for it and find things easily. Because this, this is what it boils down to. How do you find stuff quick? This is what it boils down to, and particularly on your phone. So Evernote, I use this. Um, I have a lot of reps that I've worked with that use Evernote a lot more extensively than I do. And they, they get enormous value out of it because they can find things uh, very quickly. Here's the caveat to Evernote. Your info security team will probably have issues if you're downloading it on your own and downloading a bunch of company confidential information onto it. That's not something you want to do. If you're going to use Evernote, make sure you go through your IT team and that you guys have an enterprise license. Um, or that you at least get an email saying this is okay. And you want to set up a separate Evernote account for you professionally than you do personally. Because they'll if it's a small company you work for, you'll probably, they'll probably get you to end up wiping it at the end of your employment period. So set up a separate Evernote professionally than you do personally and try and go through your company if they'll allow it. Um, mine, it took about two months worth of back and forth 
but they eventually allowed it as long as it was with through their own networks and you know, there's a bunch of IT stuff that quite frankly I, I didn't understand all of the back and forth in terms of how they secured the data transferring in packets back and forth but they seemed to figure it out um, and that was the important thing so if you're looking for for example if you're going to use the um, voice text function and you're going to send that off and you want to store that somewhere you want to be able to retrieve it a client file um, I had something yesterday um, which is fantastic I was in a client meeting and they came out and showed me quotes from the end users of the system that we just deployed. And they were all really positive quotes. And I liked it so much, I took a copy, I scanned it, and I stuck it into my Evernote. And I'm going to use that over and over and over again. And it really helps, particularly with that organization, selling in because they had proactively gone out and sought feedback from the end users about how great everything was. And now with Evernote, I can deploy that and find it very quickly. Um, any other questions on Evernote, please use the chat function, and I'm happy to read them out. That's tool number four, Evernote. The last tool I want to talk about a little bit more is building marketing collateral, websites, brochures, business cards, logos, all that type of stuff. But things that you are going to use on and reuse on a regular basis. Here's another channel for you to be able to do that. And yes, it's another marketplace. It's called 99designs. 99designs is a really interesting website with a very interesting how it works. So I've shared two previously. This, this is tool number five of 99designs. 99designs works a little bit differently in the fact that this is crowdsourced. So what will happen is you put out a cash prize for the design of whatever you want, a website, a logo, a business card, a brochure, a PowerPoint template, and people compete against it. You choose the top ones and you select it so you can see hundreds of different ideas. It's a really interesting way to approach things. Um, again, wow, I wish these guys gave me a cut because <laughs> that would be amazing, but they don't. So here's a bias-free recommendation, 99 designs. This is something that you want to use for an item that you're going to be reusing a lot. Because for Fiverr and Upwork, the other two marketplaces that we talked about, um, they, they can do graphic design work. The quality is so-so, but it's also very cheap and very fast, which is what you need. If you need something that you're going to be reusing a lot, like for me, I tend to pitch um, uh, managing insurance claims. There's, there's particular pieces of software and hardware around that that you can that I pitch over and over and over again. I know that I'm going to use a PowerPoint deck that I'm going to reuse over and over. That's the one I'm going to use. And if I want a real rock star one, this is what you got to do. Here's the downside. The quality is much higher, which is wonderful. The downside is so is the price. So you're probably going to have to expense this. Um, or if you're a small business owner, think carefully about it. But it allows you to be able to get a much better result because designers around the world are actually submitting designs for you to pick and choose, which is great. So let's take a look at some of the things that you can do. So logo, you can do a business card, a logo and a business card, logo and design, stationary, cool, sure, whatever. Uh, a lot of app design stuff, also interesting. Website design, sure. If you want to set up a microsite, for some of your clients, if you've got a particular niche like strength training or insurance claims or whatever the, the area of interest is, you can get them to build you a very high quality website. Um, here's the things that I tend to use. So under the business and advertising streams, these are the things that I tuck into um, getting them to build a really good infographic, a PowerPoint template, a poster, a booklet or a pamphlet or a lead behind a brochure, a, or you can even get a truck or van wrap. I'm not sure I'd use that, but interesting. These are some of the things that you can use for, uh, in particular, PowerPoint templates and brochures. If it's something that you're going to be using a lot, you can plunk this in there. And it's pretty quick, too. I mean, you can usually get the whole thing done in a, in a week or two um, at max. Here's a, here's the, more importantly, here's the prices. So it's a lot more expensive than some of the other stuff. So they have a example pricing. So you can go bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and 
depending on how much prize money you put up, there will be more and more designers that will compete for that for obvious reasons. If there's a bigger prize, you'll end up getting a lot more designers. Um, you always have a money-back guarantee with them, too. So if you don't find a design that you like, you don't pay anything, which is also kind of fun, especially for sales reps, because we're usually um, tied up for time. So, for example, here's our pricing side. Here's our poster. For bronze, you can get about 30 designs for $269. Uh, about 40 designers will pitch in for $40. And when I say better designers, what they really mean is more experience. For 800 bucks, you can get an amazing poster. You can go through different stuff. Um, a lot of the things that I like to tuck into, look, you can even have a tattoo designed, which is kind of wild. A PowerPoint template is another one I look at a lot. Um, for me, I found silver does t really does tend to be the best value for money. Bronze, bronze is okay. You'll get some designers. You'll get some good designs out of it. Silver, you'll get not so much more designs, but you do get better designers. And for 400 bucks, you probably have to expense that because that's a lot of money but you can get something done relatively fast and really high quality. Um, key note with these guys too is if you are end up expensing this stuff, make sure that, you, that you've given them your company's brand and guidelines ahead of time. Um, how do you protect IP and confidentiality is a question that comes up a lot. Um, the, how you do that is with an NDA. Before you get going, you sign an NDA. And um, if you really want, you can have uh, the, the company's legal department, your company's legal department, look over the terms and conditions within 99 designs. Um, I find them as our fifth tool to be a really good way to generate very high quality stuff. But again, the trade-off is there. It's also more expensive. So you got to make sure that this is thing, things that you're going to be using a lot. Does that make sense? Okay. So in terms of five tools, here's a quick recap. Number one, Franklin Covey training. Uh, in particular, using the Eisenhower decision matrix. So quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, what's urgent and what's important. Get some training um, and some tools to help you to be able to deploy that in your day. If time is really money in our business, which I believe firmly it is, then you've got to make the most of it. This is how. Tool number two, tucking into Inoshino and just white shirts. You want to be able to look your best without spending an absolute fortune this is a good way to do it, particularly for um, custom clothes. So, for example, uh, I, I have a tough time finding shirts that fit body type stuff, whatever. It doesn't fit for whatever reason. I can get a shirt from here. It fits. It fits well. Um, I can get a suit from there. It fits well. It looks good. And I'm not breaking the bank while I'm at it, um, especially if you're managing a team. Gift cards here, particularly for new sales reps, are a great idea because they end up showing up sharp and they can get it some business wear that they need. Um, tool number three, talking about Dragon uh, by Nuance. Dragon is a great piece of software that helps you enter your Salesforce notes or CRM notes three times as fast as you would be able to otherwise for about 200 bucks a year. Coming up next, where do you stick all this stuff and how do you find it? Evernote. Evernote's a great tool. Just make sure you're going through your company IT department on this one. Make sure that you're not going to have any issues going back and forth, and make sure that you have a separate Evernote account for you professionally than you do personally. And lastly, 99designs. For the really high-end stuff that you're going to use over and over again, you can go to these guys. You'll spend a varying amount, go for the silver package, and you can get some very high-quality items in there. So for those five tools, that's what we recommend. And, of course, I would also always extend the offer for anybody from CPA course, at Rockstar Sales, we're always doing webinar-based sales training. You're more than welcome. Uh, we've actually offered as a gift anyone on this webinar. They can use CPSA as a code, and they can join our, our regular training programs. We hold them on webinars, either at lunchtime or after work, and they're about tactical sales stuff. Our next one's actually going to be what we call a deal workshop. We're going to do next week, and where we get people to bring deals that they're working on, they're stuck on. And they say, how do you unstick this deal? And I can vouch from personal experience, I brought one of my own deals that was absolutely stuck into it, and I got some great ideas, and I won a $600,000 deal out of it. So I was, I was always very happy with the feedback because it's, it's about us as a community, not one person as an expert. Uh, one question that came up in the meantime, too, is that 
how do you get management buy-in to cover the costs? And it depends what it is. Um, you're, you're not going to get much buy-in from management to cover something like Indochino for a new suit. For Franklin Covey, um, for training, training is a very different sell than something like uh, Dragon, naturally speaking. Uh, Dragon's a one-time cost for sales productivity, so you can usually cover that. 99 Designs um, is a way to cover off uh, marketing spend and save money on marketing. Um, so that's, that's a great way to be able to use that. Uh, Evernote, same thing. It's about sales productivity. Anything that's around sales productivity um, tends to be a hot topic because management, at least in my opinion, for most companies is really clued in to the fact that more time you spend non-selling on non-selling activities, it's worse for the company. So if you can tie that argument saying, here's how much time it will save me, I will pilot it. That's the key word as well. You want to approach management and say, I will pilot this with you to see how it works. And if it works, then you can roll it out across the whole business. I think this will save me an hour a day or however long it is. Uh, that's really about management buy-in. Other questions and thoughts? For these five tools, um, what, actually, I'll, I'll leave you one more thing too. One more thing that I've um, been experimenting with a lot in terms of sales techniques, because there's a difference between learning about your product and what it can do versus how do you actually persuade people to do things and to actually get a deal done. And I, I want to expand on the impact a, a little bit. So those questions that we talked about, so not asking about what the problem is, but what's the impact. I would ask, here's a fuller set of questions that I'm now asking that I found to be much more effective. So number one, what happens if this doesn't change? And I want to listen to the result. Then I want to explore financial implications of that. So how much money will you lose or make or lose out on if you don't go forward with this? That's number two. Number three, another question I'm asking a lot these days is saying, so how does this affect you personally? If this doesn't get fixed, what happens to you? And the correct answer, by the way, what I'm waiting for is I'm going to get fired. So that's wonderful. That opportunity immediately moves up on my radar. And um, also then from the organization. So what's the risk to the organization? If this doesn't change, what happens to the organization? More often than not, um, particularly I, sell, I tend to sell into a very large organization, so they're really concerned with reputational damage. So the question I ask is saying, well, how will this damage your reputation if this doesn't change? And that tends to be a hot button for them as well. Uh, a couple of questions that are coming in. Thoughts on built-in voice dictation software for the BlackBerry, please. I have not used the voice dictation software for BlackBerry. Um, I, yeah, I, sadly I don't have a BlackBerry anymore. I'm still, they're a Canadian company. I'm still cheering for them. I had to move away to, uh, to Samsung and Android recently. Well, not, not so recently even, but I haven't used it yet, so I can't comment on it too much. But when can, coming back to the questions to ask around the impact, ask about what's the impact if things don't change? Because here's the deal. If they don't have a major reason to go through the pain of change, then it's never going to happen. And the, the opportunities that I'm working on right now that are at the top of my list, is because, number one, there's a senior executive that laid down the lawn that all of this needs to change by January 27th. That opportunity went straight to the top of my list. Another one says, uh, we're losing a million dollars a year in business that we need to capture unless we fix this. That went right to the top of my list. Because when you focus on the impact rather than just what the question, what the problem is, you'll get much better results. So, Ruplin, at this point, I'm happy to turn this back to you. We're running a little bit ahead of time. If there's other questions coming in, that's great. Otherwise, I can turn that back to you. Amazing. I think we're okay for questions now, and you've addressed all of the questions that have been sent through the Q&A function. So thank you, everybody. On behalf of the CPSA, we want to thank our hosts, of course, again, Jamie Jackson, and for our audience um, for attending today's webinar. 
Um, please, again, if you have any questions, please contact us at success at cpsa.com. And for those of you who would like a video copy of the webinar, please stay tuned. This will be emailed to you shortly by end of day. So thank you so much, everybody, for attending today's webinar, and we hope to see you on the next one. Thanks so much, everybody.